You are the chief economist for Goldman Sachs, so let's talk about the outlook for global growth. Uh, the IMF out with a revision a little bit, uh, slightly downward, but still things are are going well for the global economy. Uh, but you do still have some headwinds out there, whether it's geopolitically or with the coronavirus. What is generally your outlook for 2020? Generally fairly positive. 2019 was definitely a weaker year, and I think the downward revision from the IMF uh, is, is, is testament to that. Uh, only about 3% global growth, um, half a percentage point or so less than generally expected a year earlier. But for this year, we think we'll be moving closer to 3.5%. Uh, and we're, you know, so sequential improvement relative to last year. And we're also somewhat above the consensus forecast, which is still closer to 3. Yeah, I was looking through all your calls pretty much for most of the major economies. You're above consensus on just about all of them. In, in many of the uh, advanced economies, so it's true in the U.S., um, to a lesser degree in Europe as well, and a number of the emerging economies, India, for example, uh, Russia, we're a little bit more positive. China, I would say, more in line with consensus, um, although even in China, the latest numbers have actually been a little bit more encouraging. And around the region, we've also seen from some of the smaller economies uh, some positive numbers, Taiwan, for example, we talked about earlier. So let's talk about China. You're saying that maybe the authorities are going to accept slightly lower than 6% rather than that 6 to 6.5%. Yeah, quality rather than quantity, I think, has been the mantra a little bit. And so um, around 6% seems to be the indication, which might mean, you know, high fives is, uh, is acceptable. And at the moment, based on our high frequency indicators, our current activity indicator that summarizes all of the monthly numbers, we're, we're growing somewhere around six. Um, so the, there's, there doesn't seem to be a need for a large amount of stimulus from the, from the authorities um, in 2020. More perhaps targeted easing? I mean, they're not doing the headline number, the headline the benchmark rate, but more targeted easing where they need it perhaps? If there are shocks, we mentioned the coronavirus, we mentioned uh, the trade war, that could ha offer some friction as they get into phase two negotiations. Yeah, that's not our baseline. Our baseline is that the trade impact both on the U.S. and on China was you know, pretty clearly negative in late 2019, subtracting something like four-tenths of a percentage point in the U.S. from sequential annualized growth, maybe six-tenths of a percentage point in China. We think those numbers move back towards zero. Uh, and so in that environment, they would not need to ease to, 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 to offset that. However, of course, it's uncertain. I mean, yeah. we, don't, we don't know. There could be a hiccup. If there is a hiccup, then, of course, policy is also going to be potentially in a different place. What is the net impact, then, on China and the United States from the clearing off, signing of the phase one trade deal? Well, effectively, uh, those numbers moving back to zero. So it's effectively a, bo a boost of, you know, four-tenths, if you will, in the, in the U.S. and six-tenths in, uh, in China. But that's only one of the influences hitting the economy. There are a number of other influences, uh, policy impetus uh, from, from monetary policy, fiscal changes in financial conditions. But when we take all of them together, you know, we do think that things are uh, uh, becoming a bit more, more positive and, and in, uh, in a bunch of places. And it seems central bankers and authorities are looking more at fiscal stimulus than monetary. We're seeing it in Japan with the big package there. Uh, also in the United States, Really, I mean, with your baseline call for the economy there, no chance really in your estimation that the Fed is going to move in 2020, right? No. Definitely not ease, right? Um, yeah, I would never say definitely, okay. but I think uh, the, the baseline is very much nothing uh, through 2020. No hikes, uh, no cuts. Um, I think hikes are also quite unlikely given that inflation is four-tenths below the Fed's target. On fiscal policy, I think it depends a lot on where you look. Um, Japan um, is becoming somewhat more expansionary. Europe is becoming somewhat more expansionary. The UK is uh, putting in a bigger, uh, uh, a bigger spending package on, on infrastructure. So that should have a backloaded effect in 2020 and into 2021. In the US, the fiscal policy impact is going to become a bit more negative after a large boost in 2018 and to some degree 2019. That's taking away uh, a portion of the positive impulse from 
the trade, um, the reduction in, in trade impact and easier financial conditions. Are you concerned at all that perhaps we're getting a little frothy in the U.S., asset price bubbles, uh, or is the debt burden not a concern? Well, asset prices have certainly risen a lot, equity prices in particular, credit spreads are very tight. So it's natural to ask that question, and several <clears throat> Fed officials have brought this up again. That said, the big difference with the last couple of cycles, in my view, is that uh, private sector debt growth has just been much, much smaller, especially in the household sector. And so I, I, I don't have the same kinds of concerns that we had in, say, 2000 or 2006, 2007.